We just learned that there are several comma rules, but we're going to focus on three today. So the three comma rules that we talked about in our previous lesson was using a comma after an introductory phrase, using commas to separate more than two items in a series, and then using a comma before quotation marks. What we're going to do today is apply those comma rule knowledge to our science text reading. As you can see, I have a copy of my science text chapter here. I have already gone through and did my before reading, during reading, and after reading activities for strategies for good reading styles. I have made notes off to the side, but what I want to do now is go back through and look at some of the grammar places. Looking at texts help us to be better writers. When they place commas, we have to ask ourselves, why is that comma there? And the more that we recognize where to put commas, the better off we'll be further on down the road. So as I'm reading through this, making observations, I read the first sentence. Imagine that you are a scientist. While collecting water samples at a local pond, comma, you notice a frog with five legs instead of four. So I had to ask myself, why is that comma there? Well, we just learned about introductory phrases, and so this is a perfect example of that. What we have is an incomplete sentence that then introduces the sentence behind it. While collecting water samples at a local pond, comma, you notice a frog with five legs. So this comma right here is an example of an introductory phrase. I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to pick green as the color. So we have already found one comma that we learned about in our text reading. Let's continue. As you start to look around, comma, you discover that many of the frogs. So this is the same example as the one above. This is an introductory phrase. If I just came up to you and said, as you start to look around, and then paused and then didn't say anything, that wouldn't make sense, right? It's not a complete sentence. So what they're doing is they're introducing this incomplete sentence, putting a comma there, and then continuing on. So this is also an example of an introductory phrase. I'm going to highlight with green the same. If we continue with the same sentence, you discover that many of the frogs have extra limbs, comma, extra eyes, comma, or no eyes. What do you think this comma rule applies to? If you said items in a series, you're correct. Here we have limbs, comma, eyes, comma, or no eyes. So this is more than two items. They're looking at observations that they can make of a frog and there's three different observations. So those are items in a series separated by commas. One frog even has limbs coming out of its mouth. Ooh, crazy. These are your observations, comma, or things you notice about an environment using your five cents. So here we have another introductory phrase. I'll highlight that in green. As we continue, it says, the next step is to ask a question about the frogs. You may ask, comma, why are so many frogs deformed? Question. This is a perfect example of using a comma before quotation marks. Also notice that the first letter in quotation marks is always capitalized. So just in this one paragraph and one sentence, we have located three introductory phrase comma rules one items in a series comma rule and another comma rule dealing with a comma before quotation marks. Have fun with your lesson locating more commas.